Now you have been uh, dealing with local uh, producers for quite some time, is that correct? That's correct. We've been buying uh, local foods for at least the last three years, maybe a little bit before that. Why have you gone to buying local? Oh, a couple reasons. One, I like the quality. I also just like supporting local farmers, small farmers. Um, we keep some of our money local, so my money is going about a mile away instead of to California, which is great. Well, today I'm going to be baking a uh, bacon and sharp cheddar cheese scone. Okay. Um, recipe can found, be found in the Wisconsin Local Foods Journal, uh -huh. uh, 2013. Um, it's a great little book. It has lots of local recipes and Excellent. tips for eating locally. All right. Well, first up, um, I like to do most of my scone baking using a food processor, actually. If you don't have one, you could do this at home, the more traditional method with a bowl and a pastry cutter to cut your butter in and all that. I find it a lot easier with a food processor, however. So uh, we're going to start with some flour. I like to do a half white, half whole wheat. Uh, right now we can find some whole wheat flour at the market, which is great. And so I did a cup of each. So we have two cups of flour total. Okay. Right. Then we're going to add to that. Uh, two teaspoons of sugar, uh, baking powder, salt, and pepper. Mm -hmm. All the proportions are in the recipe, of course. Yeah. Uh, then we're going to put our lid on. Just give it a quick pulse. Mix it up. Add to that four t tablespoons of cold butter, chopped up. Okay. Colder the better. So it's cold butter and you have pre-chopped it. Pre-chopped it, yep. So okay. it should be in little pieces already. All right. I'm just going to pulse it a couple times. It does not have to be that mixed in yet. We're going to add a couple other things to it. So, okay. Um, next, we're going to dump in about four or five ounces of sharp cheddar cheese. Okay. We like to use a five-year sharp cheddar. Okay. There's a couple great vendors at the farmer's market selling this. Absolutely. And then up to about a half a pound of Jordadel pre-cooked bacon. Okay. I don't cook it too crispy. I like to keep some bacon character to it. Sure. When you cook that bacon, do you fry it? Do you bake it? How do you we bake it. So we bake it um, about 16, 17 minutes. Okay. I try to keep some of the fat still on there. I don't like to cook it to a crisp. I think bacon should have a little bit of chew to it still. I just lay it flat on a sheet pan. Great. Um, that's the best way to cook bacon in our opinion. So 350, yep. Yeah. Um, it's maybe at home for 20, 25 even. Okay. You know, just have to watch it. Excellent. So. Excellent. All right, so we have the flour, baking soda, pepper, salt, sugar, all that. I added the cheese and the bacon. I'm just going to give it a couple quick pulses again to mix it up. So you're not looking to, you don't want to dice all that stuff up too much. You're just getting it mixed up. Okay. To that, we're going to add about a cup of heavy cream or half and half. This happens to be half and half today. Uh -huh. um, I say about a cup, obviously, depending on your flour, it's gonna vary a little bit. Sure. So use your eye, use your best judgment. Okay. When I mix this up, we're gonna be a little bit more careful. We don't wanna overwork this too much. I just wanted to stir up and kind of form a big ball and then we'll stop. So we are all set to mix this up. I'm just gonna pulse it until it starts coming together. We want it to kind of ball up a little bit. I'll kind of show you guys what it looks like. So that's about perfect. Uh, you can see it's kind of chunky still. Uh, definite okay. texture to that. That's going to let us have a nice flaky scone when we're done. If you're doing this by hand, you might have to play with it a little bit more. The food processor definitely makes it simple. Wow, I guess so. So I'm going to get the blade out of there. If you're doing this at home, you'd probably then put this out, roll it flat about a half an inch thick um, into a circle, and then just cut uh, triangles out of it. Um, here we like to keep things pretty portion controlled, so I just use a scoop and I'm going to just scoop out portions. So I'll just continue to go and go ahead and portion out these scones. You know, obviously if you had a really sticky dough, maybe add a little bit more flour when you're making it next time or, um, or just flour your work surface well. Our oven set at 350 degrees. At home, it'll probably take about 20, 25. You'll just have to keep an eye on them. Get a timer set. I like to use a timer on these things. You'll notice in the recipe book, it says to brush a little bit of uh, milk over the top of the scones to help with browning. I found that in our oven in particular, that that's not necessary. Uh, it probably is in a home oven though, so I would probably do it if you're making these at home. So when I look at them, I don't need to test them with a toothpick or anything. Just make sure they've browned up a little bit. They look like they are just about perfect. Um, I'll just set them down to 
cool for a couple minutes. Um, I think scones are best actually if they're served at room temperature as opposed to piping hot. Well, thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you.